The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, April 13th, 2021, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research and Ben Breitholtz of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Talking Data. Our Talking Data series seeks to offer timely insights into macro market themes along with macro data and its impact on the economy and markets. I'm Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading and I'm joined today by Jim Bianco of Bianco Research and Ben Breitholtz of Arbor Data Science. Welcome to both of you. Today, uh, Ben and Jim will both be discussing and giving us an update on inflation. So let's get started with you, Jim. What's the latest on the inflation numbers? Well, the latest is we're finally here in the base effect. I'd like to welcome everybody to it and hope that you enjoy it as well, too. And of course, what the base effect is, is that we've dropped off March of 2020 and we've added March of 2021. March of 2020 was when the lockdowns began and we had a big drop in the inflation statistics. So we saw a surge in the year-over-year -year inflation numbers from 1.7 to 2.6. Now, as we drop off April and May, if you assume that the inflation statistics uh, CPI is unchanged for April and unchanged for May, and you drop off April 2020, May 2021, that 2.6 is going to go to 3.5. But that's assuming that you have zero on the inflation rate for the next two months, and we haven't had that. We've had four tenths and five tenths for the last few months. If you have any number that's equivalent to that, we can see a four handle on year over year inflation in the next two months. Now, that's the base effect. We all know that that's happening. Uh, and so well, that shouldn't be a surprise. As I've argued on this podcast for months now, we know this is going to happen. We also know when you get into June and July, those numbers should back off a little bit. When you look at what's dropping off, I'm talking about the year over years, and then we'll see what happens. But beyond that, 0.4.5 for the headline numbers over the last uh, couple of months, 0.3 on the core number. Those are pretty heady numbers. And this is coming off of last week's PPI numbers that were 1%. That was a huge number as well, too. So there is some nascent signs that the inflation numbers are kicking up a little bit. Not enough to really get the market bothered. We'll talk about that in the next session. But uh, you are definitely starting to see those numbers start to move. Anecdotally, you're also seeing um, lumber prices soaring. Uh, we're up to $1,200 a board foot on lumber prices from $200, a 6x increase in a year. Uh, as um, somebody noted, the increase in lumber prices is adding about $25,000 to the average house price. That's almost a down payment right now. Just do you have to pay in lumber prices to build a new house? Uh, as well, to used car prices um, are are soaring uh, as well too, and in the the biggest sign that inflation might be a problem, I guess Ben is having some problem with some of his landscaping in the last couple of weeks, trying to get his uh, get some mulch done as well too. So Ben. Let me yes. turn it over to you. How is your landscaping going? And tell us more about some of the numbers. I'm not happy. So yeah, so uh, for real, seeing a 50% jump in um, in terms of the labor cost of both, you know, the, the good itself and then the service of putting down the mulch. And I think it seems pretty ubiquitous um, in terms of querying around uh, the country. <laughs> it's it's difficult to get the labor, which is you know is some of a shortage. Um, a lot of the individuals are becoming extremely picky. Uh, contractors and so on because they want the higher do dollar value of projects and some of these smaller projects just aren't getting picked up um, and that's there's a lot of demand there uh, so the 50 percent uh, bounce is you know is, is pretty high and that's you know getting back to the reports you talk about PPI with things like uh, lumber there's over 40 different components in that miscellaneous commodities and services portion of PPI that are uh, more than two standard deviations above their average on a rolling three month basis. So on a rolling three month basis, PPI, core PPI is up over 8%. Now that's an annualized basis. So the big question going forward is, do we get this cost push inflation to finally show up? And if you look back historically at core and headline CPI, you get these spikes, kind of like we got now with 30, 60 basis points for core and headline CPI. That typically is extremely short-lived. 
So the big question is, do we get cost push inflation, which would then show up months later? It's not going to show up this month, uh, but we get these big jumps in all of these different commodities on the PPI front. Will over the next three to six months, will they push that on to consumers? And that's what we got to wait um, and see. So markets, I think, are a little bit um, uh, kind of on the fence, and we'll talk about that real quick. We have a chart up showing the uh, commodity front, so things that are actually traded on exchanges. And what is interesting to balance this relative to PPI and this huge spike in certain areas, it can be anything from car rentals to um, all these different goods that we're talking about on the producer side. Uh, but what's interesting is that on the, commodity, the big commodity side, everything from aluminum to zinc, we've seen somewhat of a rolling over in the past couple of weeks. So into the end of February, we had 96% of commodities positive on a three month rolling basis, which was uh, impressive. That just doesn't happen often. We saw it for a brief period in 2014, a little bit in 2011, but that's emphatic numbers. That's backed off now to 57%, uh, which is quite the slide. And typically there's some autocorrelation here. We'll typically see it fall below 50%. If that falls below 50%, I'm a little bit concerned that this, these pops in PPI uh, will be, you know, they will be short-lived and won't translate into consumer inflation. But that we have to really, um, you know, kind of wait and see uh, if that'll be the case. So again, like Jim talked about, forget the year-over-year -year numbers. Uh, next three to six months, going to be critical to see what happens with month over month. If we can print 20 to 30 basis points, both in core and headline CPI, and sustain that, we ha are cooking with gas because typically, you don't get elevated numbers like that, you know, back to back or consistently. And that would prove this time is different if we can. And Jim, yeah. we're going to turn it back over to you. Can you also talk about what this means for interest rates? Yeah. So a lot of these inflation numbers, you know, as we've talked about, some nascent signs that might be coming, uh, we'll still have to wait and see. And of course, the other big one is wages. There are some anecdotal signs that wages might be picking up as well, too. In addition to another topic we've talked a lot about here is personal income is booming because of all of the, uh, uh, the stimulus money that everybody's gotten. It's having, I think, the same effect as if they would have gotten a raise recently as well, too. And that might be followed up. As far as the market is concerned, this is the big $64,000 question. Now, Jay Powell spoke on 60 Minutes this past Sunday, two days ago, as we are recording. And he was basically saying, oh, they'll, they, the Fed, will tolerate higher inflation. And they, the Fed, have tools to deal with inflation. And I'll come back and say what I've always said. It's not your call, Jay. It's the market's call. If, if we get inflation to run a hot above two, two and a half percent, and the market is okay with it, then the Fed's okay with it. If the market's not okay with it, then the Fed's going to have a real problem on its hands. The market right now, I think what we're seeing in the data is it's validating the big rise over the last several months of data that we've seen. So we're starting to see some signs that inflation might be picking up. Yes. And we went from February 1st, 99 basis points on the 10-year note to 168 basis points or 1.68% now. So we're up almost 70 basis points in a little over two months. And now we're starting to see the data. That's the way markets are supposed to work. It anticipated what we're seeing now. The next question is what comes next? I think the market is still unsure as to whether or not we're going to see more inflation as we move forward. Uh, but it's definitely not in the mode that the inflation story has peaked because we're still only about 10 basis points away from the high print of 177 set about two weeks ago. Yeah, heck, we have, you know, we have tips break evens in the five year space, you know, above 260 basis points, 10 year space above 230 basis points. So we're getting obviously elevated levels, but there's a you know neat market we talk about, which is inflation swaps, caps and floors, essentially call and put options on headline CPI. And what's most interesting over the past, you know, maybe a week or so is that we've gotten this big dispersion in the outlook uh, between the two to five year outlook, which would be maybe this kind of transitory short lived versus inflation versus the long term 10 to 30 year outlook. And we got this chart that shows the probability that's being priced in by these markets of two and a half plus percent headline CPI. Two and five year outlook is beginning to price it in, you know, 54 and 64 percent probability, respectively. That again might be showing that, okay, we can get this burst in inflation, short run. It's kind of, you know, to the Fed, 
So the Fed's benefit it would be this transitory nature, I hate that word, but, and then 10 and 30 year though, is been reluctant, meaning that are we gonna see a regime shift higher in inflation, which would be a big deal. And this is what Jim's been talking about too. Would there be a bona fide regime shift where the long-term average actually starts to creep back positive? And there's some dynamics that would be supportive of that, uh, but we're waiting for investors to kick in. So for me, it's kind of like inflation expectations have, you know, like we said, the, maybe the easy money has been made. They've run fast. They've been impacted by TIF purchases from the Federal Reserve. That could be anywhere between 30 to 100 basis points of the widening we've seen uh, over the past year. But now, you know, we've got to see this right side tail, this two and a half plus percent headline CPI priced in, in order to have core really sustainably run above 2%. Uh, so one of the most important metrics, I think, really is this 10 and 30 year inflation swap caps and floors focused on two and a half percent. So we'll see if that can come to fruition. Um, if not, it's going to be this reflation story that Jim's talked about so much, too. If you look at what is correlated to, um, you know, what is really driving nominal yields higher and you look at the correlation of the real yield component, which is the tip tips and then you look at the inflation expectations which is the tips break even and it's been driven so far by the tips uh you know by the real yield component that's where the, the correlation is the strongest um relative to nominal yields now that doesn't mean it can't switch really quick and that's typically what happens it's it's a quick flip um uh, that happens really quick we've talked about Balmageddon and other instances where this has happened um and so we got to watch those correlations closely if uh, tips break even suddenly correlate uh, with nominals, and then they become, for example, negatively correlated with equity risk like the VIX, then we have a real story where risk markets need to be concerned. Until then, you can you can live pretty you know safely, happily with this this you know, equity rally that we've been in. Um, but that's another metric to watch very closely, one that we've talked about a lot on this podcast. I'll just um, just conclude real quick. Another thing we've talked a lot about the for podcast, at least I have. It's the difference between R and I, reflation and inflation. And you can see it in the stock market too. It's near its its all time highs again uh, as well to just a few points off of it on the S&P. It seems to have this love hate relationship with rising interest rates. Is it because of inflation? Is it because of real growth, reflation? Remember real growth, reflation is good. Higher rates because of that is good for equities. It's good for the economy. Higher interest rates because of I, inflation, I would argue, is not so good. And the reason I say I would argue is we haven't seen that in 25 years. So I would argue that that would be the case again. And I think the market is kind of, you know, vacillates back and forth. Two months ago when we were going through 150, it was all worried about inflation. Now that we're near 170, it's all decided that it's reflation. But that could go back and forth quite a bit as well, too. So this love-hate relationship that stocks have with interest rates, I don't think is over, especially if we start seeing inflation push us above 180, 190 on the 10 year note, you could probably start to see uh, the risk markets they be bothered by it again, like they were in March. Well, thank you both for your thoughts today. We appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianca Research and Arbor Data Science. For further information, please contact us at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.